In this lesson, we'll take a look at how the trapezoidal rule is used for finding the area underneath a curve. I have a multi-part question prepared underneath, but before we start tackling this question, let's go through a quick introduction. The trapezoidal rule is a numerical integration technique used to approximate the area under a curve. By dividing the length of a curve into strips of equal width and using the area of a trapezoidal formula for each of these strips, the total area underneath the curve can be found. Now I've shown two important formulas here. The first one is the trapezoidal rule and we'll discuss how this is derived as we complete our question. And underneath that is the area of a trapezoid where we have area is equal to h and that's multiplied to a plus b all divided by 2. h represents the height of the trapezoid and a and b represent the lengths of the parallel sides. So the question asks Approximate the area underneath the dashed curve by using four trapezoids of equal length and two trapezoids of equal length. And I just want you to think for a moment, which of these two will produce the more accurate area? So the very first thing that you must acknowledge is the width of the curve. As you can see, it extends from zero to four. So to find the total width, we can take the last number and subtract it from the first number, which happens to be four. So that's the total width of our curve. Now it's quite obvious that it's four. We don't need to show four minus zero, but depending on your question, it might not start at zero. And so you would need to do this step to find the width. Now, because they want four trapezoids, we will take this value of four and we'll divide it by the amount of trapezoids we want to use to approximate the area underneath the curve. So we'll take four and we'll divide it by four. And this gives us one. That number tells us the H value of each of the trapezoids that we'll be using or the width of each trapezoid. So I'll call this H is equal to one. So every one unit along the horizontal axis will have a trapezoid. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So we'll have a trapezoid within here one within here, another along this range, and finally one more here. That makes up our four trapezoids. Now remember, the formula for the area of a trapezoid is shown right here. And for reference, I'll call this trapezoid one, two, three, and four. Let's go ahead and find the area of trapezoid one. Using that formula, area is equal to, we know the value of h is one, and a and b represent the parallel sides. So if this were our trapezoid, where that line is parallel to that one, and we were to connect a straight line from here to here, we can call this a, and it has a length of four, and the length from here to here, you can make a guess, it looks to be about 3.5. So four plus 3.5, all divided by two. Four plus 3.5 is 7.5. Divide by two makes 3.75. Now the fact that we eyeballed this to be roughly 3.5 along the y-axis is the reason why we call this technique an approximation technique. Because someone could have easily interpreted this as 3.4 or 3.6. And that would lead to an area, specifically area of trapezoid one, that is a little different than ours. So do expect some slight variations from one person to another. Okay, now we have to find the area of trapezoid two. H is equal to one, don't forget. And the length from here to here will be the same as the previous trapezoid. So I'll write down 3.5 plus, but what does change is the length from here to here. That's new to us. And it looks to be around 2.6. So I'll connect this, and that has a length of around 2.6. So 3.5 plus 2.6, all divided by two, should give an output of 3.05. And you can verify that on your calculator. So here we have 3.75 units squared 
and here we have 3.05 units squared. Now let's go ahead and find the area of the third trapezoid. We'll connect this point to that point, and again, height is 1. The length of that was determined to be 2.6 in the previous area that we found, plus the length of this one looks to be around 5.5. And we'll divide that by 2. So let's use our calculator. 2.6 plus 5.5 divided by 2. And we end up with 4.05 units squared. And finally, the area of number 4. We'll connect it from here to here. That should be the same as 5.5. So 1 times 5.5 plus that is 5. All divided by 2. So 10.5 divided by 2 is 5.25. So now that we've found each individual area, we can find our total area. So I'll write down a sub t is approximately equal to, and to find this, we simply sum up each of these values. So let's use our calculator. 3.75 plus 3.05 plus 4.05 plus 5.25. And we end up with an area that is roughly 16.1 square units. Now before we move on to the second part of this question, I do want to show you how the trapezoidal rule formula is derived. And now that we've done an example, we can actually start to piece together how this all comes about. So I'll start by writing down a sub t, or a total, is roughly equal to and to help you understand how this comes together, I'll rewrite each of these individual statements up here. Notice how they're all written down with the plus sign in between. And as you can see, 1 over 2 is in common in all four of these terms. So rather than writing it down four times, we can write it down as 1 over 2. Now remember, 1 represents the height, so we can write this more generally as h. And that's precisely where that part of our formula comes from. Now what remains are all of the things that weren't factored out, which are 4 plus 3.5, 3.5 plus 2.6, and so on. And so we'll write that down as 4 plus 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 2.6 and the rest will be written as well. Now take a good look at what's inside of the red brackets. We have two of these, two of those, and two of these. And so rather than writing them out as a sum, we can write them out as 2 times 3.5 plus 2 times 2.6 plus 2 times 5.5. Those are our interior observations. If you recall, when we were finding out each of those, they were 3.5, 2.6, and 5.5. And that's precisely what's found in the formula. We have our interior observations multiplied by 2. And over here, we have our first and our last observations. They happen to be the first and the last terms. The formula has them grouped together. These three terms in blue can be written as 2 times 3.5 plus 2.6 plus 5.5. And that is how we derive the trapezoidal rule, where that 2 corresponds to that factor 2 in the formula. Now, rather than redoing the second part of this question using this elaborate method, let's use the trapezoidal formula instead. And the very first thing, just as before, is we want to find out what h is equal to. According to the formula, h is equal to x sub n minus x sub 0 over n. This means the last observation along the x-axis, and that means the first observation along the x-axis. So for us, it was 4 minus 0. We'll write down h is equal to 4 minus 0, and n represents the number of trapezoids we want to use to approximate the area, and they're specifically asking for 2, so n is equal to 2. Therefore, h is 4 minus 0, which is 4 divided by 2, 
and now our common h value is 2. So every two units along the x-axis, we will have a trapezoid. Our trapezoid will be here, our first one, and it will extend from that point to that point. And we'll have a second trapezoid that extends from here to there. I'll call this trapezoid 1 and trapezoid 2. Now remember, we are using the trapezoidal rule, and so we have the total area is roughly equal to h over 2, which is 2 divided by 2, and that gets multiplied to our first and our last observation along the vertical. So this was 4, and that was 5. We want to stay consistent with our previous, and we add to that 2 times the interior observations. We only have one interior observation, and it extends, if you recall from our previous reading was 2.6. So we have 2 times 2.6 and we'll go ahead now and use our calculator to find this. 2 divided by 2 is 1 times 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 2 times 2.6 and we end up with an answer of 14.2. And that's considerably lower than our previous finding which was 16.1. I'll just write that down for reference. 16.1 was the area we found when we used four trapezoids. That answers question A. Let's move on to question B. If the true area is 16.89 square units, what can be concluded about the importance of using a reasonable number of trapezoids? And this question goes back to that original thought experiment where I asked you to determine which of these two will generate the more accurate area. And it is clear that using more trapezoids, since 16.1 is closer to 16.89, generates a more accurate area. And the fewer trapezoids you use, the less accurate your findings will be. We can even go ahead and calculate the relative difference to get a quantitative value showing that this is more accurate. We can do this by taking 16.1, subtract from the actual, which is 16.89. So you take your observed minus your actual, and whatever that value is, if it happens to be negative, make sure that it becomes positive. So we put these lines to indicate that, that we don't want any negative answers. And that gets divided by 16.89, the actual. So 16.1 minus 16.89. That gives us a negative value. We'll make it positive. So 0 0.79 instead, divided by 16.89. And we want to represent this as a percentage. So we'll multiply whatever we get by 100%. On our calculator, we'll multiply by 100%. And we end up with a relative difference of 4.7%. That's how different it is from the actual area. If you repeat this calculation for 14.2 instead, of course this number will jump up, indicating that it is less accurate. And finally, for question C, predict what would happen if a single trapezoid is used to approximate the entire area. So let's just erase our markings and extend a line from here to here. If you do that, you'll notice over here that we are underestimating. Over here, we are overestimating and underestimating here. Because the overestimation is larger than these two combined, we can make a prediction that with a single trapezoid, we'll end up with an over approximation of the area. So you would expect the area likely to be greater than 16.89 if you use only a single trapezoid. If you have any questions regarding what was taught in this lesson, feel free to use the comment section below or our website at biology-forums.com. Thanks for watching.